Zelensky's defense and Putin's dilemma in Ukraine. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob the Orc, and we're going to talk about Ukraine. It is February 27th, 2022, and I'm going to try and condense a lot of information uh, to give sort of a quick update on what's going on. So most of the information out there is, is frankly propaganda. The Ukrainians are putting out a lot of propaganda. The Russians are putting out a lot of propaganda. Most of it's BS. Um, so let's let's look at this uh, from from both Zelensky's perspective and Putin's perspective. What are they trying to do? Uh, Zelensky has been waging a very creative war. He's for the most part avoiding direct confrontation where he can and hitting the Russian logistics and supply lines. And that's causing them a lot of problems. He knows that if he can draw out the war, and play for time that eventually he's going to continue to build up uh, more international support. He's getting a stronger and stronger defense and, and Putin's going to run out of steam. Now that's not to say they aren't blowing up tanks. You know, there's a reason that, that Trump and Zelensky were good buddies and that's because Trump sent uh, uh, Ukraine a whole bunch of uh, Javelin anti-tank missiles, a bunch of anti-air missiles, a bunch of just shoulder launched, easily concealable, uh, weapon systems that are easy to use, you know, comparatively speaking, and and the Ukrainian defense forces have been putting those to really uh, good use. Uh, Putin has a a different dilemma. He he claims that he's trying to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine, but he also but he obviously wants to do a regime change, and by defending the cities with a bunch of civilians. Putin's forced to make a choice. He can do some heavy fighting like what's going on in Kharkiv, uh, where they're not going to put up as stiff a resistance as Kiev. But if he wants to go into Kiev and flip the government, he's going to have to really hammer them hard. And Putin's been leaving most of his forces in reserve. So let's take a look and see what's, what's going on here. So the areas in red are roughly where, uh, where it seems that the Russians control. You know, they obviously have a strong force down in Crimea, and they've been trying to form a land bridge uh, to connect uh, the southern part of Ukraine. And I think they're going to be successful with that. That's a generally pro-Russian population. I think they're going to be able to do that. The, uh, the separatist regions in the east, Putin basically already controlled these areas, and that's where probably the heaviest fighting is going on. And when, Putin, uh, when Putin's talking about denazification, he's talking about a lot of the private uh, Ukrainian private armies that are, that are privately funded by the Ukrainian oligarchs. And, and my understanding is he's hitting the crap out of those guys. Uh, so he's probably going to wipe them out. Uh, you know, up... Uh, up in the northeastern part of Ukraine, there seems to be a lot of fighting. He's been pushing in. He's trying to get to Ukra uh, to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And he's got to find a way to cross the Dnieper River. You know, Kiev's kind of straddling both sides. Uh, I don't know if... I don't know if the Russians have taken Kharkiv yet. I know they're trying to, and there's been a lot of fighting there. But like I said, Putin has a dilemma. He's... So the United States has really accurate weapons that are designed for urban warfare where we can drop very precise munitions and hit a target within inches. Russia doesn't have that. Their stuff is really powerful, but not as accurate, not as precise. And so they can just flatten entire, you know, grid squares of space. They can just take out city blocks and, and uh, you know, entire neighborhoods in one big swath. But that's going to end up pissing off uh, the Russian people more than they're already pissed because remember the Russian people and the Ukrainian people see themselves as brothers. You know, they're, they're basically the same people and a lot of the population's not so thrilled about this war. And so Putin's got to win this quick, but he can't cause too much collateral damage. Uh, other and, and the Russian army is just not designed for being careful about civilian casualties. So he's having, he's having a real trouble there. You know, in the north, he's making it down towards Kiev, and, and re there's reports that there's uh, fighting in the outskirts of Kiev. There's some infiltrators probably, uh, special forces types probably going into Kiev. But Zelensky has armed up a civilian militia, and they can't really roll into Kiev too easily. They're blowing some bridges to make it more difficult for the Russians to advance. But 
if Putin wants to take Kiev, he's going to have to flatten the place, and that's not going to play well back home. Uh, so, you know, even even dictators have to have to play to their people. Or, or in his case, he's really more like a monarch, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out, uh, you know, uh, when, when it comes to succession in probably 10 or 20 years. So Putin's real dilemma is he can't just flatten Kiev, but if he's careful about it, Zelensky's you know, uh, defensive plan to attack the Russian logistics is, is taking a real toll. You know, Russia still has the bulk of their forces unengaged, and I'm not sure what they're saving it for. Maybe to sweep through, uh, sweep through Western Ukraine to cut off any reinforcements. Maybe he's waiting for to see if Zelensky will uh, step out of the cities, which I don't think he's going to. I think Zelensky's going to play it very careful. Or maybe he's saving it to hammer any reinforcements that might come in. But I think the reality is a lot of Putin's forces, he can't expend the fuel to send everybody in at once. Uh, he's got limited supply. And, you know, the if this is a common problem for militaries. If you look back in World War II, for example, the Germans had this amazingly powerful military, but they didn't have enough fuel to send it all into the field at once. And so that really limited their combat effectiveness, especially when they were, you know, in the later years of the war. And I think with Russia's limited economy, I think Putin's starting to feel this. This is probably costing him, you know, billions of dollars every day that this goes on. So, what I think you're going to see in the next few days, I think Zelensky's going to hold. You know, he's done a great job with the morale of the, of the population. And he's going to hold Kiev unless Putin really brings down the hammer on him. Now, if, if Putin decides to flatten the city, there's not a lot that, that Zelensky can do about it. The Ukrainians don't have the means to withstand that kind of bombardment. But I don't think the Ukrainians are going to give up. You know, in the, in the worst case, they'll go into the underground tunnels uh, under Kiev, which are, are basically bomb shelters. You know, their whole subway system is really deep underground. And I think that that would force... Uh, that would, you know, that would force a, uh, you know, real close quarters fighting, and that's going to be just brutal and bloody. And I don't think Putin's going to do that. I don't think he can afford to do that. So they're talking about a negotiated peace settlement right now, and there's some debate over where they're going to have it. Um, Putin originally wanted to negotiate peace in, in Belarus, and they wanted to, to call a secession of fighting. Everybody kind of take a, take a breather. Uh, Zelensky told him to shove it. And, and that they're going to keep on fighting. Uh, there have been several other countries. Uh, most recently, I think Israel has offered to broker, uh, broker peace. A lot of different companies or countries are willing to uh, mediate peace talks. I think at this point, if, if Zelensky can hold out for a few more days, Putin's going to be forced to sue for peace, or, or, or not sue for peace, but, uh, but accept some sort of mediated uh, agreement. I think that... Uh, Ukraine probably can't hold east of the Dnieper River. Um, that's generally a pro-Russian area of Ukraine. Uh, in the south, they're going to have a hard time holding that as well. But the western part of Ukraine is is very pro-West, and and I think that's why you haven't seen a lot of troops going in there because that's where Putin would find the stiffest resistance. Whereas most of the fighting in the in the east, a lot of the pro-Russian uh, Ukrainians have already fled to Russia, and and that lets Putin take a heavier hand in the east, where he couldn't do that in the west without, you know, looking like a bigger asshole than he than he already than he already looks. Uh, you know, Zelensky is definitely winning the public relations campaign. Uh, can he hold out? I think he can, at least for a while. Um, now. The, the, the risk of using untrained civilians as a, as a militia is there's a lot of problems, and they could collapse very quickly if Russia sends in their, their special forces, which I think they're going to probably try and do that here in the next day or two uh, to do uh, some sort of special forces attack on Kiev. Because uh, if he can take out Zelensky or capture him and force a, uh, force a surrender... That would be Putin's best case scenario to force a regime change. But I, I, I don't know if he can pull that off. It's really, it could, go, it could go either way right now. 
you know, the numbers are in Putin's favor, but because he's forced to hold back because he doesn't want a bunch of Ukrainian civilian casualties, I know that's really strange. You, you know, normally Russia doesn't care about casualties, uh, but in this case it's very important. You know, because Putin's sort of in a situation where he's forced to hold back and he doesn't have the right army for the job in this case, you know, you see these these uh, these vehicles with these racks of, of missiles on the back. They just shower an area with missiles. Those are great for just wiping out the, uh, the private armies that are in the eastern Ukraine. But those are not good for city fighting if you don't want to flatten the city. So that's Putin's dilemma, and I'm not sure what he's going to do. Uh, I hear that there's a lot of uh, protests in Russia right now, according to my Russian friends, and my Ukrainian friends all seem pretty, uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty stoic. They're gonna, you know, they're they're saying they're gonna hold out. So, I think time's running out for Putin. He's got to wrap this up quickly. So I think he's gonna go for a negotiated settlement, and uh, and then we'll see how that plays out. Anyway, I'll try and update you guys when I have more information. But this is the best I can come up with from my uh, from my sources in Russia and Ukraine and what I'm seeing uh, open source on the internet. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe my, uh, to my to my channel. Uh, share my videos with your friends. And you know the nice thing about about what I'm doing because this is a hobby for me. I don't I don't you know I don't need the money from this. I'm just doing this uh, because I think I have an, uh, a useful insight into what's going on because I've traveled extensively uh, in this region. So. If there's anything that you guys want me to talk about, message me on Facebook or put a comment uh, on the video, and, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, and you guys stay safe. Goodbye. Okay,